Well, as you've just seen, Police Minister Beki Tele was uh, delivering the crime statistics for 2017-2018 financial year at a briefing in Parliament earlier today. Well, the stats for murders, rapes and other sexual assaults have all increased according to the latest crime stats. Tele has uh, asked for different sectors of society to work more closely with the police to help curb the crime rate. He says that it must not be a norm uh, that citizens are hijacked, robbed and killed on a daily basis. Well, to help us unpack these uh, statistics and uh, what they mean going forward, I'm now joined from our Pretoria studios by Dr. Chris de Kock, who's an independent uh, crime analyst. So, Dr. de Kock, thanks very much for joining us. Welcome to the program. Um, can I just begin by asking you um, what figures stood out for you when you were analyzing those statistics? Uh, good afternoon and good afternoon to the viewers. Um, I must say, I must start with the murder tendency or the murder rate, uh, the murder figure. That came to me as a huge surprise. I must say, if you look at it, it is the first increase. Look, we, we had decreases of murders since before the time of the late uh, General or Commissioner Salebi. Uh, around about the turn of the century, 1999-2000, we had a figure above 20,000. That was the last time we had a figure, a murder figure above 20,000. Then uh, it started to decrease from about 2002, 3. It decreased right up to 10, 11, uh, actually 11, 12. That was the lowest point that we ever reached with murders. And then suddenly for the last six consecutive years, it increased. But this increase of 2017-18 is the highest of all of those six. So this is really bad. It is also bad because this is the one tendency that the world, universally, the world see this as the most stable or the most valid tendency, crime tendency. You trust your murder figures because there's a body, to put it very bluntly. Mm. Now, 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 in our case... This will count against us on various, in various as, uh, uh, ways, uh, because in uh, companies and, uh, and, and, and organizations, the World Bank, uh, all kinds of organizations use murder figures, your homicide figures, as an indicator of stability in South Africa. Uh, and, and this will put us in a very bad position internationally. All right. Now, the rest of the figures, actually, actually, if we look at the rest of the crime figures, it's quite positive. There are some very positive developments, except in the field of robbery. There are small decreases in some robberies, but it is still far from the kind of decreases that we need. So that's my general view. I must also just add that uh, the police have not uh, indicated any figures on what I call street public robbery uh, you know street public robbery is actually the biggest segment the biggest proportion of your robberies now that one luckily went down with two percent it, it decreased with two percent for the first time in also six years it, it actually decreased but it is still far i mean it have increased so much in the past six years that this is actually one of the biggest generators of murders. All right, Dr. Or let me tell, Dr. Say, Dukok, policeable generators of murders. All right, Dr. De Kock, let's talk about this murder rate because, uh, you know, it, it's shockingly high, but there's something about South Africa. Uh, my belief is that, uh, my understanding is that uh, the number of murders that we have compared to other countries is five times higher. Why are we such a violent society? Why is it that we have so many murders, much more than uh, the uh, global average? Well, look, I, it's not 100% it's not true that it's five times higher. It's five times higher than uh, maybe on European and Asian standards. But uh, there are countries in, in Central and Northern Southern America uh, the northern part of South, um, uh, South America, uh, like countries like Brazil, countries like Mexico, Honduras, and Guatemala, and a few others, which have higher and the same type of figures than ours. But still, it's very high. Now, 
one of the generators of our violence is, uh, is domestically or people knowing each other, killing each other after they had too much to drink and maybe they've used some drugs. And then you get an argument and the next moment they have a fight and they kill each other. And uh, then five years down the line or three years down the line, the court find that this was not even a murder, but it, the outcome is that it was actually basically a, uh, a, 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 a culpable homicide. Mm. But that is one of the areas which the police can't do much about. They can control liquor, they can control drugs, but police can basically on that issue not do uh, very much. Mm. But there's another generator of crime, and that is our robberies. Our robberies generate the second largest proportion of our murder. And then there's the reaction on this robberies, which in some areas is vigilantism. Now, according to my analysis and to, according to my view, about 25% at least of the national murder figure is generated through these two factors. All right. A Dr. Robberies Clark, on the I'm, one hand, Dr. and Clark, then the reaction gonna, from the community, I'm going to hurry us along because we're running, and running out of time. But I just wanted to think about some of the solutions. The uh, minister was quite frank and uh, a little bit more open, one would suggest, uh, today with uh, the problem facing them. And we heard some of the initiatives that are in play. We heard things like uh, safe cities. Talk to us about some of these initiatives, what they mean, and can they get uh, the problem solved? I must say, I, I hear a lot of words, and I hear a lot about strategies and, and safer cities and all of these things. I think there's the, the basic, the most basic thing that should be done is to control, first, alcohol and drugs. Secondly, the most important thing to do is to really have visible, intelligence-based, visible policing addressing the robbery problem. People get robbed, uh, in, in not only, not only as I say, in this figures you don't even see street and public robbery, although it's, it's under aggravated robbery, but people are robbed in the same stations on a daily basis because the police are not visible. If I look at the top murder stations, Nyanga is still there, Kailicha is still there, Harare is still there, and a whole list of other, Inanda and so forth. Now, those are stations where the poor people which use the mass transport on a daily basis as they travel from their work to the home, they get robbed of the few rent that they have got in their pocket. And they are killed. In the process, they are killed. They are stabbed and then they lie there for the whole night and tomorrow morning they are dead. So we must stop talking all of these big strategies and big words and we must go to the basics. And we must, like in the times of Salebe and in the times of when General Kele, or the minister when he was General Kele, and he was the national commissioner, those were the things that were focused, and they were at 7 and an 8 and a 9 and a 10% decrease in street public robbery, which also had an effect on murder. That is the kind of things that we have to address. Otherwise, we, we, we get stuck in all of these big fancy ideas of safer cities and all of the other stuff. All right, Dr. Zakok, unfortunately we've run out of time, but thanks very much indeed for sharing your thoughts and uh, insights today. All right, that was uh, Dr. Chris Zakok, an independent crime analyst, uh, saying that uh, we pretty much have to get back to the basics of what we were doing before when the stats were going the other way, and that's uh, having more police officers on the ground and uh, visible.